today I want to talk about um, capacitors and maybe using some of the properties of capacitors to give yourself a little bit extra benefit and layout for free. So I guess to start this a little bit, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the capacitors themselves. Um, and if you look at capacitors and CMOS processes up until actually the advent of MOM capacitors, what we would have seen is traditionally kind of a plus and a minus, maybe the old electrolytic style curve to show us a plus and a minus. But these differentiate are what are called top plate and bottom plate. Um, I've done many training courses and I've always asked people what are definitions for top plate and bottom plate. And there's different definitions, but really the only one I've ever seen for top plate that really, really, really works is top plate is not the bottom plate. And that's a little bit tongue in cheek, but it's true. So what I always do is I try to identify the bottom plate first and then the top plate is the other one. Now, of course, we're hardware engineers, not software engineers, or so bottom plate, I can't say it's not the top plate because that'd be recursion. So bottom plate is the one with most parasitic to sub. So we identify the plate that has the most parasitic, that's the bottom plate, and the other one is going to be the top plate. So if I come along here and we basically take this capacitor down and just have a very, very quick peek at it, effectively what we're saying here is that this is going to have a capacitance to substrate, and this is going to have a capacitance to substrate. We're gonna call this C top, we're gonna to call this C bottom, so much that C top is less than C bottom. Now. With MOM caps, which are fingered caps, assuming that they're the same number of fingers on both terminals, they're actually completely symmetrical where top and bottom are the same. But assume it or not, assume we're talking about MIM capacitors or our typical MOS capacitors, how can we actually use this to our benefit? Well, what I've got here is a really simple example. And I'm assuming what we have is we basically an amplifier here and we're decoupling the output of the amplifier to ground, which is to VSS or which is to substrate. Now that's important, we're decoupling effectively to substrate. So I have three scenarios here. Um, we've got a basically a plus and a minus here which is scenario A, scenario B is we've got a minus and a plus, so we're swapping these around. And then scenario C is really the person's not so sure. Um, and we would have done this quite a bit in the olden days, particularly for things like uh, LC tanks, VCOs, where you would try and balance the cap capacitance between each other. So which one's best? My guess is honestly 99% of people will probably go for this. They put the top plate on the signal, and this is our basic signal output, and they put the bottom plate on ground. But actually this is best because what you're getting here, don't forget, is each one of these is getting the capacitor to ground, but they're also getting a plus terminal to ground. And in this case, because the negative terminal here is greater, so my C bottom, don't forget, is greater than my C top. Overall, B is going to give you more capacitance per unit area to substrate. And that's just by turning the terminal upside down. Now you have to be careful, you need to make sure that it's not a, it's a, that it's a linear capacitor, not a MOS capacitor, because the, the terminals are fine there, but MIM capacitors. Um, but by just turning it upside down, effectively you, you get more capacitance per unit area. It's a free little trick. Um, it can be useful at times, can give you more capacitance, um, but either way, it's something that you should always be thinking about.